Sure, you can An imitate a voice or bamboozle face recognition, but good luck changing your fingerprints. So obviously the answer to our biometric safe is yes, right? Right? Not so fast. In 2019, the Biostar 2 breach leaked almost 28 million records, and among them, a million fingerprints. So now what? Back to passwords? Not really. Here's the thing, right? Biometric authentication methods in general have a very big advantage. They're super easy to use. Take iPhone face recognition, for example. You look at the device and bam, you're in. Well, likely so is anyone with a good photo of you. So we might not fully trust face recognition software, but what about fingerprints? To unlock your device, you only need to tap it, nothing more. Okay, tap it twice. Three times? God damn! Okay, I'm in. See? Easy. And only you have this unique key. Or do you? Okay, so fingerprints are much harder to hack than all the password 123s and pet names, but sadly there's no such thing as 100% safe fingerprints. In most cases, biometric data is not stored as a picture, but in the form of encrypted binary code. Sounds super safe, but the fact that it's hard to reach only makes it more valuable. And where you can find such tempting data, you'll find cyber criminals trying to get a piece of it. If there's a threat actor with a personal vendetta against you, getting your fingerprint examples can be as easy as spending five bucks. First off, finding a sample won't be that hard. Unless you're wearing gloves 24-7, you're leaving your fingerprints on every surface you touch. To retrieve it, all a criminal needs is some tape, some photo editing software, a laser printer, and a bit of wood glue. Boom perfect copy. This is some movie stuff right here. Only this can totally happen in real life. But chances are, you're not being targeted by a criminal. I mean, if you are, you probably have bigger problems. For cyber criminals, going after a single person just often isn't worth the trouble. So naturally, they scale up. This is where two more biometric safety issues come to light. The first one is within the technology itself. In this case, smartphones. Instead of trying to scan the whole fingerprint, most of them use partial matches to recognize the owner. That's why you have to tap it like a million times from all different sides when setting it up. While full fingerprints are unique, a partial match can actually apply to a significant number of people. So with that info, you can create something called a master print. And voila, this can now unlock about 4% of users' phones. You can imagine that going around trying to steal and unlock phones, hoping that they're in that 4% isn't really time efficient. But not all hope is lost for the unfriendly neighborhood cyber criminal. There is one more issue that can be exploited, storage. You can basically turn the are biometric safe question into are they stored safely? Because if this info stays with you, threat actors have a much, much lower chance of getting their grubby mitts on it. Meanwhile, if it's hanging around in some servers along with thousands or millions of other fingerprints, it is a very desirable cybercriminal meal. So how do you store your biometric data safely? There's actually a number of ways, but let's talk about the three most popular methods. One, never having it leave your device. Cybercriminals often target collections of data, be it huge servers or company networks. But if your personal info stays with you on a single device, it is automatically much less of a target. This is actually what most smartphones and PCs use. For example, Apple encrypts and stores user biometric data in secure enclave, and it never leaves the device during the authentication. Even if someone gains access to the biometric data, it's impossible to reverse engineer a fingerprint image. Method two is using portable hardware tokens, like a security card or a USB. This kind of turns into two-factor authentication since you have to present the hardware token with your biometric data. The only downside to that is you have to carry it around. And if you're like me and you tend to forget and lose your keys all the time, well, this might just get lost somewhere too. Method three is distributed storage. Part of the data is stored locally, and part of it is in external storage. So a threat actor would need to gain access to both places to compromise the data, which again is much harder to do. So then how do you decide where it's safe to use your biometrics for confirmation? Well here, all the generic online privacy rules apply. Always double check what kind of website or platform is asking for this information and why. I mean, if it's your banking app, it makes sense to use it to confirm that it's truly you. 
but don't share your biometric data on questionable sites or apps. Overall, if you don't want or have other means of protecting your device and accounts, biometrics are obviously better than nothing. It's also stronger than having a weak password, but you need to understand it's not perfect and keep an eye on where your data is stored. If you're truly concerned about your biometrics falling into the wrong hands, combine it with a strong password or use it as a two-factor authentication method. While the future of biometric safety is still unclear, overall, the more layers of protection you have, the more secure your data will be. I hope this cleared some things up. Please leave a like and subscribe if you found this video helpful. Thank you so much. I'll see you around.